Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got a short video for you about this thing. Big old Navy can opener. But not the kind of cans you would think of. So we are in one of the Battleship's many, many powder magazines right now. And uh, we think that this handle, which is labeled 16 inch PT Mark III and IV, is going to be used to open one of these 16 inch tank Mark III dated 1944. So our gun crew guys were on board and they're a team of volunteers who have been on the ship for years who uh, reactivate and operate our five inch guns, our 40 millimeter Bofors, our 40 millimeter two pounder saluting guns, um, and any other explosives that the museum uses. Check out this video on restoring the guns, linked in the description below, that uh, we shot that includes one of the gun crew members uh, talking about the work that they do to keep those guns operating. If you're interested in working with our gun crew and firing one of the guns, if you are interested in firing one of the guns and meeting our gun crew, we allow visitors to fire some of our guns for a donation to the museum. There's a link in the description to our website page where you can do that. But also, if you just happen to come on board on days when the gun crew is here, uh, as part of the ticketing process, you will be offered the chance to fire a saluted gun for a donation. So um, you can schedule it in advance with us or uh, hope you get lucky when you come out and visit. And it tends to be every other Saturday that they're on board. Getting back to the point of this actual video, the can opener. Our powder, which is normally in 110 pound silk bags like this comes in aluminum canisters like this one. Each canister will hold three of those bags and weighs about 20 pounds on its own. So it's 350 pounds of powder. This gives it a little bit of protection when it's sitting here in the magazine so that if somebody comes in smoking, it's not gonna set everything off. Although there's no smoking signs everywhere. I can't imagine anybody doing that. Uh, and when it's in this canister, you can move it along the overhead rail that goes all along Broadway and all throughout the uh, magazine spaces on the ship. Also, uh, one of the preservatives used with the uh, nitrocellulose cordite grains of powder is ether, which puts off a fume, uh, which can be detrimental to somebody's health. Uh, so it is contained in these powder canisters. And then you would open the canisters and you would use a brass hook. You take a brass hook like this one that can loop onto the handhold in the bag and you can pull it out of the canister. Brass, of course, does not spark. So brass and aluminum, non-ferrous metals, tend to be used extensively in powder magazines like this one. So our gun crew was climbing around beneath the gun turrets. Uh, the turrets themselves are five story rotating structure and there's one level beneath them between the triple bottom and the actual rotating part, which has some uh, storage areas that are about four feet tall. It's also where all the wiring going into the gun is. Check out this video we did on the ship's catacombs, which access those spaces. So all of that power uh, that is how we power all the motors that rotate and elevate the guns and all the equipment inside. And that is the very center of the gun turret at the bottom. And there's that central stalk that goes up the center of the turret, and that's where the ladder is that the crew used to climb up. So they went down there to see if they could find any tools for the guns. When the Navy decommissioned these ships, they took off a lot of things which could be used on other vessels but they left things which are not still in use, like this 1940s era cast can opener. Uh, so they go down there, they're looking for stuff that they need for the guns, and they found these, which there are racks for 
in each of the magazines, including this one, which we've tried to restore and open to the public. Uh, so they brought them up and brought them to me uh, to see, hey, do you know what this is? Do you think we can use it? So here we are testing out my theory on what these are. So you've got the uh, powder can here, which I imagine is probably watertight when it's cranked down. And you've got this little thing with these gears, which I think those teeth will made up perfectly with this. And would you look at that? Opens perfectly. Notice there's this slotted piece in there, which will fit with the grooves. And then you've got, thank God, that tank is empty. Reinsert that. I can open and close this by hand, but maybe I, I want to crank it down real tight. Now I can't move it by hand anymore. So this seems to be one old pattern that's cast, pretty fancy. Um, while they were down there, they also found this big beefy boy, even has a label stenciled on it, uh, and it seems to be stamped and it seems to just be aluminum bar stock with some handles welded on it. So if I had to guess, I would say that this is a 1980s, maybe Vietnam era, but probably 1980s uh, manufacturer uh, replacement because they probably didn't have enough of these laying around or they broke some or lost some or what have you. And I'm not sure it's complete. It looks like there should be something here on the handle that may be a rotating sleeve. Um, but this really gives you some leverage. Otherwise it works the same way. Opening and closing. Uh, I don't know who would need this much leverage to crush one of these powder canisters closed, but th this one has a 1944 manufacturer date on it. Um, Let's see, some of these other ones in here have 43 manufacture dates on them. So they're old and they're still being used in the 90s. Maybe they don't all seat properly and you really wanna give them a crush. But when you're transporting these via the rail, there's a sling that goes on them and I'm pretty sure that the handle here that we use to take the lid off is also hooked onto for slinging these around. So it is important that these are secure. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty certain that these are watertight, airtight, so that you, you really wanna crank down on that gasket. And then of course, you've got them stacked floor to ceiling in here, thousands and thousands of pounds of them in each magazine. So there's a lot of crushing weight coming down on them and maybe that starts to deform. Aluminum's a fairly soft metal. We can all crush soda cans with our hands. So this is just a big soda can basically. While we're here in the magazine, let's uh, take a walk around the room and point out a few of the other features we have. Uh, I'll put these back on their rack and you can see where we think they live. So here's some nice slots right over here. Not that one. That uh, seem to fit these various tools pretty well. Uh, we've done some other uh, videos where we go around and explore features in magazines, but because this one's actually restored for you to see, we've got some features that otherwise wouldn't be here, such as uh, this weird foldy thing, which is just an overly wrought step stool. Ugh. Hey, okay, that slots him right. That slots in right. So there you go. Ah, that's relatively sturdy. One government issue step stool made by the lowest bidder. So uh, if the powder canisters are stacked floor to ceiling like they would need to be to hold the right amount of ammunition, you can reach the upper levels. I'm six foot tall, uh, and you can see that the overhead is significantly taller. Here's one of those rails we talked about up here. So, ooh, why don't you work right, friend? 
Yeah. It looks like there is a, uh, there is holes down here to pin those in place. Uh, and we do not seem to have the pins for this stool, but you know, one of a hundred things where there are brackets in the room, what the heck went in these brackets? And then we found these in, in a different space and it makes sense they would be here because you gotta reach stuff high up. Whoever said that we used to make great things in these countries in the 1940s never ran into a US government issue steps. Anyway, I've climbed through gun barrels. I've uh, gone into some void spaces on this ship. And I think the most dangerous thing I've ever done working here was standing on this stool. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments about the equipment in this space, leave them in the comment section down below. Do you think you could pull a 110 pound powder bag out of a uh, canister over your head? Let us know in the comment section down below. We don't use manual artillery this big anymore. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. The support from them would pay for uh, my insurance when I break my neck falling off of this stool. We also receive support from a number of other places, including viewers like you, which helps support our YouTube channel. So thank you for your donations. When you specifically earmark it to YouTube, that goes to the job we're doing. It's just part of a larger job as curator and education manager here. So the support you've given us in the last year has allowed us to go from making one video a week to making five or more videos a week. We really appreciate that support uh, and your continued support. And because we're making so much content, remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when new stuff comes out. Thanks for watching. Now I'm gonna try and dismount without breaking anything. See you next time.